an OLED? What's the catch? Hey guys, how's it going? Justin here from Waltz, and today we're taking a look at the new Skyworth 9300, which is new to the US, and it's basically the best value OLED on the market right now, and we'll, we're going to dive into why. We're going to break this video up into four parts to make it easy, starting with the picture quality, the features and design, moving on to the audio, and then, of course, my final thoughts. So, without further ado, let's talk about the picture quality. <laughs> Now, the 9300 is an OLED TV, and it also has a native resolution of 4K, which means that there's 8.3 million pixels. And because this is an OLED TV, each one of those individual pixels can actually turn itself on and off, which allows for perfect blacks. If you want to know more about OLEDs, I've done a ton of videos on OLEDs, so you should probably check out something like maybe the OLED B2. But basically, this is the best technology as far as getting the richest blacks and the best contrast in my opinion. And because it's an OLED, there's no issues with panel bleeding, such as something that you know has a couple zones in there that might not distribute the light perfectly. That's what's really nice about OLED is it's just super crisp. Now this TV does come with HDR, which most people would probably expect from an OLED TV, but it also has a quad core processor, which helps with more than just the picture quality. And that leads us into our next part. Now jumping into the features and design, somewhere we have to start is definitely gonna be the connections because there's a few things I wanna cover here. Outside of basic connections like USB and obviously optical, it does have three HDMI ports. Now it does support HDMI ARC and eARC. However, these are 2.0, not 2.1 ports. So it's gonna be a little bit of a bummer for the gaming side of things, but we'll cover that in just a second. As far as the base goes for this TV, it's gonna lie pretty slim to the table. And honestly, this is kind of similar to some of the other brands that you would see as far as uh, base goes. It's not really feet, but it's also a little bit wide for you know your standard base. I've never had a problem with it, but if you plan on mounting it on the wall, then you don't even need to worry about this part. And earlier we were talking about processing power and why that's important. It's not only important for the picture quality, but you also wanna have high processing power for your everyday use. And by everyday use, I mean your operating system. The Skyworth 9300 does run on Android 10, which personally, I'm not the biggest fan of. I've, you know, just not ever been a fan of the Google operating systems. They've made it a lot better, but um, it really comes down to preference because I know some people do really like it. You can still customize it just about as much as every other operating system. But if you want to get really into the customization, it can be a little bit tedious. And that's personally why I'm not a huge fan. Now, we also got to talk about gaming because if you remember what I said earlier, this actually has 2.0 ports, not 2.1, which is kind of a problem. And this can be really confusing because your native refresh rate is 120 hertz. The panel can do 120 hertz, but the HDMI cables that they put in it, because they're not 2.1, they can only do 60. So if you're not a gamer, this means nothing to you. It's not really a big deal. But if you are a gamer, this might not be the best TV for you. It does have a gaming mode with low latency, but again, I mean, if you're not going to be able to get that 120 hertz, then it's kind of a big deal. And if you're on an old gen, I guess it doesn't really matter, but if you're on a PS5 or one of the new Xboxes, you definitely want to have that because it's part of what you're paying for. Now the remote for the Skyworth is actually pretty good in my opinion. And I really like having all the apps that they have in the center of the remote because these are my most used apps. So having that as physical buttons rather than having to go through the operating system and finding them, is a definitely a big plus for me. And if you guys are enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Let's talk audio. Now the 9300 does have two rear firing speakers, which allow for Dolby Atmos, but if I'm gonna rate this on a scale, honestly, one to 10 for TV audio, probably getting a two. I know you're like, Justin, a two for TV audio. I mean, why? That's just incredibly terrible. Well, I'll explain why. First off, I'm really never going to rank any audio for a TV more than a four unless it's an ultra premium because the way speakers are designed, they're usually designed to go into the ground and they're not good at all. Just simply not good. So if you're really going to want to amp up your audio, you're going to have to buy something like a soundbar or a full Dolby Atmos dedicated hardwired system, which can 
get pretty pricey. People don't really budget for a soundbar, which is crazy in my opinion, because I think audio is 50% of the experience, if not more. Now, if you don't believe me, watch this clip and you tell me which one is more tolerable. So this is an example of amazing video quality with terrible audio quality. Let's switch and see what sounds better. Now our video quality has decreased, but our audio quality has gone through the roof, major improvements. What do you guys think? To me, I can handle a little bit less on the video quality as long as the audio quality doesn't sound terrible. So this brings us into our next part. So looking at this TV overall, I think it's an amazing value TV because you're still getting an OLED picture at not an OLED price. I mean, this thing is going to be under $1,000 for even a 65 inch, which is crazy. If it's something where, you know, you really, really want OLED, but you simply just can't budget for it, this would definitely be a great TV for you. If you're willing to spend a little bit more and get something a little bit nicer like LG's B2, which I think is probably the best value OLED as far as gaming goes. I would definitely consider it, but you have to remember value OLED and this thing does look pretty sharp, pretty crisp. It's not as bright as some of the other OLEDs, but again, way cheaper, way cheaper. And you can really appreciate things like the remote, which is pretty easy to use and has a nice design alongside the super thin bezels that you get from that OLED TV. Now this TV does come in a 65 inch and a 55 inch, which I'll put those dimensions on the screen right now. You can take a screenshot of it and thank me later. And if you're looking at picking one of these up, make sure you visit the links down in our description. If you have any comments or questions about this TV specifically, leave them down in the comments section. And as always, if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. If this is a product that you're interested, make sure to email me at YouTube at Waltz so I can get you a special YouTube discount. If you haven't already, subscribe for more videos like these and we'll see you in the next one.